So today we're going to look at the AXL smart elements, uh, specifically the analog input for the 4 to 20. There are other options. We have a 0 to 20, uh, 0 to 10, and I believe a plus minus 10 volt as well. Um, they're all going to be slightly different in how they work, but they are all pre-configured. So unlike some of the other analog modules we set up before, you don't have to tell it what you're using, it's pre-configured to be 4 to 20 and will only be 4 to 20. Um, so if we go ahead and look at the data sheet, um, I believe in a previous video, I said that these were zero to 10,000. Uh, the analog current is actually zero to 16,000. The analog voltages are zero to 10,000. So that's where we'll see plus 20 milliamps is 16,000. Uh, 4 milliamps is zero. So the range is zero to 16,000. Um, we're also going to use a library. We've used this library in the past, uh, AXL Analog, and we like it because it does all the scaling for us already. And as you can see, we have the Smart Elements card right here. And we know we're going to put a five into the I range. So let's go ahead and get this all set up. So we'll add an analog scaling block. We need our word. This is going to be our external AI1 input. We know that because we're all on the local bus and not Profinet, this is going to be set to true. The low limit is going to be 4.0 um, because we're going to be using 4 milliamps and the high limit is going to be 20.0. Um, the range will be five, as we saw from the data sheet, and substitution we're going to leave alone, again, because we want it to be output of zero. If, if I get a bad value, I don't want to hold the last value or output something else. I want to get a zero. Um, so now that we've got this, you know, sort of set up, let's go ahead and make this an external variable. That way we can work outside of this worksheet with it. We're actually going to go to the 4 to 20 milliamp card. And we're just going to show you real quick the parameters. So there are a few things you can set up. Um, right now, we're using the defaults map diagnostic code to the process input. But you could also say hold last value or upper or lower scale burnout, depending on um, how your machine is set up and how you want to handle that. We can also do some open circuit monitoring if we want to. We're going to leave that alone again for today. So let's go to the data list. So again, just like everything else, we have the ability to sort of attach it to an array or we can assign them individually. Today, we're gonna assign them individually. So I'm gonna grab this EAI1. Now that should be all we have to do. Um, we've got our block scaled, we have our wiring done and we've just attached our output. So I'm gonna write and start this project and then we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. Uh, the lower hand corner should now be my multimeter. Um, we are just simulating a four to 20 milliamp signal. And if you notice on my screen here, we are actually getting an output of four milliamps. So if I change the scale to eight, you'll notice that it changes. And then if I switch my meter to do some hunting mode on analog, you'll see that these values change with the values on my fluke meter. Um, so that's analog scaling with an axial line smart element, 4 to 20 milliamp.